How's it going everybody? It's Pilot Flame and we are back with another FPL video and today we're going to be looking at our game week 37 plus lineup and the players we're going to be setting out for that going into this game week. I would like to make a mention if you give us a follow over on Twitter and Twitch, it's Pilot Flame 226. We will be doing a deadline stream for game week 37 plus at 11:30 a.m. EST. That is 1 hour before the deadline, which is 2 hours before the Burnley vs Norwich game kicks off tomorrow on the afternoon ish kickoff for that game week and unfortunately we have to deal with the fa cup being played at the same time and we won't get the team news before that so could be a bunch of interesting things going on there however i'm kind of looking forward to the fact that i don't really know what i'm going to do with my team and potentially some of you guys could influence me or help me out because i'm at a loss here i'm, I'm getting a red arrow this week for sure because my team only got 35 points but yeah if you can let me know in the comments as well as tune into the live stream it's going to be tomorrow 11 30 a.m est and we'll kind of see where we go from there but without further ado let's check out how the lineup currently is set out for this game week so this is how the team did for game week 36 plus not great 35 points overall that is with De Bruyne's zero and Calvert-Lewin replacing him off the bench who got two points my rank currently sits at 72k or just uh just under that and it's going to go up even more because of the points that the Watford and West Ham players especially the likes of Antonio could potentially get in that fixture overall just not a good game week at all we missed the captaincy again with sterling obviously only getting us one point making it two for a captaincy our one transfer did well in Olivier Giroud getting the second highest points total for a member on our team with six United Assets still doing quite well for themselves Bruno getting six Martial getting eight Greenwood getting two and I just think overall it just wasn't a great week. We got a bit unlucky, obviously, with the likes of De Bruyne and Sterling not playing. Sterling came off for 45 minutes, so I was thinking, yes, we're going to get some points here. And City just played worse, which is weird because they didn't have Kevin De Bruyne on the field. Funny that, that City play worse when they don't have their best player there. But it is what it is. Foden could have potentially had some, some chances, but not as good as the ones he had in the previous game weeks. Digne, Everton just looked terrible. He got one point again. Doherty getting an assist off the bench, which was kind of fortunate because it came off a shot which deflected to Raul Jimenez, who finished it beautifully, by the way. And then Trent getting zero points just wasn't great either. Them conceding a goal to a penalty that shouldn't have been, in my opinion, due to a handball from Doherty himself, funnily enough, which was just him more or less protecting his face from a potential bicycle kick that Chris Wood was attempting and I just think that it's just a bit unlucky that Wolves lose their clean sheet in the dying moments of the game two game weeks in a row so yeah 35 points overall not great but it is a good game week to have a bad score in that sense and I think hopefully we can look forward to the next game week the one thing that I am happy for is that the one player that I put on my buy list in Olivier Giroud we backed him he ended up getting us six points so no qualms there, and Vardy only got five, so it was definitely a one-point increase in that regard. But let's unfortunately check out what the team could be looking like for next game week in game week 37. Now going into game week 37 plus, we have the likes of Patricio in goal, Doherty, Digne, and Trent Alexander-Arnold in the same position as they were last week. The squad value is looking at you know, just under 101 million for the current players that are going to be in the squad, as well as we have a decent bit of money in the bank, getting us around 104.5 million overall value with 3.7 million in the bank. Like I mentioned with our defenders, I'm not confident at all that any of them could potentially keep a clean sheet, probably more so for, for the likes of Dinia and Trent not keeping a clean sheet or getting returns and the likes of Crystal Palace potentially nicking a goal versus Wolves and kind of spoiling their Europe aspirations as well and keeping in the top six. It is a home fixture for Wolves, so it is a little bit better. I'm definitely going to keep Doherty in just because he was benched. Patricio, I'm going to keep in because I just have him set out for the rest of the season. Maybe I'll transfer him out in the last game week, but it won't be for a hit, which it might potentially have to if I want to consider that but I think I'm kind of stuck with him for the rest of the season Trent as well could be an issue 7.7 .7 million kind of expensive for a defender that's getting zero points or one point or getting benched or not returning at all like he didn't look threatening at all 
in their previous game, whereas Robertson definitely did. And I just think overall, it's just, just a bad, bad player to have in the team at the moment. He could turn it on at any moment and is the most likely to do so with the, you know, kind of output that we've seen from him over the season. But I think Liverpool's heads have kind of just more focused on just getting the vacation time that they also deserve for the season. And with the system that is driven basically around Jordan Henderson's energy and them having to just kind of be in the groove in that sense. I think that they're very much out of the groove, much like how Sheffield United were initially, but they've already accomplished what they've needed to in winning the Premier League. And I think that Trent could be someone who makes weight going into this game week. And lastly, we have Luca Dean, who's just someone who we look like a good asset on paper and Everton's just been quite mediocre to poor in most cases and I think that normally on paper uh you know Wade Fixture versus the team that just recently promoted in Sheffield United even with the fact that Sheffield United are doing well the likes of Everton should be beating them and should be you know keeping them out Sheffield United didn't score versus Leicester who had a depleted defensive side in that sense and overall I think that our defense just isn't looking as good as what it normally would be given the fixtures or given the way the teams have played in previous game weeks where they've looked quite good and with potential rotation on the rise for some of our midfielders our bench isn't looking great either because we only have Calvert-Lewin who just can't seem to buy himself a goal at the moment with the rest of the players being non-playing players players out of contract or players that have injuries for the rest of the season. Moving into the midfield here, I'm definitely going to be captaining a Manchester United asset or potentially someone that I could be bringing in. I'm not sure yet. Maybe likes of Danny Ings, maybe even Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Who knows? But I think the United assets makes the most sense, mainly because they're playing West Ham at home. Martial has been on fire at home, specifically Bruno giving the supply line and just being a revelation at Manchester United. It's just an absolute fantastic partnership to see, as well as the reestablishment of Martial and Rashford in their game versus Crystal Palace as well. They have kind of that York v. Cole type of vibe in terms of their kind of their link up play, their one two, and kind of their proximity with each other. And they're just almost mesmeric, kind of psychic understanding of where each other are going to be on the pitch when they go to make these one two types of passes. With the City assets, I think De Bruyne is probably more likely to start in this game. He will play in the FA Cup semi-final, almost certainly. He'll probably play the full 90, but I still think he's going to play in the Watford game. And if he doesn't, then he's got a better fixture in Norwich at home. He could very well easily be rested for both of those, but as can Sterling and any other City asset, to be frank. And I think that you just have to risk that rotation there. But I think he's more likely to play in the Watford game, especially if they do make it to the FA Cup final, be rested in the game before that, and then go into the FA Cup final fresh and ready to go. Unfortunately, with Pep rotation, it is something that we kind of have to deal with in a sense. And unfortunately, we kind of have to just stick with our guns. There is a potential, you know, cut type of transfer I can make where I get out the likes of Raheem Sterling and bring in Salah and keep him in for those two game weeks and then bring in the likes of Jesus who's more likely to start going into the final game week of the season so with that kind of in the back of my mind it may be one of those two that make way I think Sterling's more likely to see 90 minutes in the final or the semi-final rather and not play in the Watford game but potentially play in the Norwich game so could potentially be some rotation there or some transfers being made there. Just not sure yet, but definitely going to be captaining a Manchester City, uh, Man United asset rather, almost certainly because City's rotation is just too risky going into game week 37 plus with the FA Cup semi-final being played before that game. And lastly, with the forward line, I currently have Greenwood and Olivier Giroud. Greenwood obviously playing in 60 minutes versus Crystal Palace and then being subbed off for the likes of Jesse Lingard. Potential protection for the youngster there makes the most sense. I expect him to start versus West Ham. And then Olivier Giroud playing versus Liverpool. Can he potentially return versus Liverpool? The way that Liverpool are playing? Very possibly. But I think he's going to potentially make way for the likes of Danny Ings, who could come in and be captain. He could also be making way for the likes of Harry Kane, who's been back in good form. Even Pierre McBamiang, who's racing for the golden boot. He's only three behind Jamie Vardy. So it could be some potential transfers there. That will require a hit for me to bring in a more expensive player. But I think for the last two game weeks, it could definitely be worth it. 
as Aubameyang could do well versus Aston Villa and Watford. Watford struggling and potentially if they lose to the likes of West Ham in the game today, they could be just kind of scrapping for points in general. Arsenal still looking for European places as well. So Arsenal may be more inclined to put out a full strength team, even if they do lose in the semi-final versus Man City in the FA Cup. And I think that they could be good assets going forward, but I'm still kind of not sure how it's going to play out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below what I should be potentially looking at. And if it's something that I have overlooked or something, then it could be something we could discuss on the live stream tomorrow in the deadline stream that we're going to be doing for Game Week 37 plus before the Burnley and Norwich game. And that's going to do it for our Game Week 37 plus lineup. Make sure to leave a follow over on Twitter and Twitch, PilotFlame226. On Twitch, we'll be doing, like I mentioned, a Game Week deadline stream for 37 plus. That is going to be tomorrow, the 18th of July, 11.30 a.m. EST. That's going to be one hour before the lineups are supposed to be put in for Game Week 37 plus. And make sure to join us over there and be ready with your questions in the chat for that in that live stream 11 30 a.m est also make sure to give us a comment down below as to which players you could potentially be bringing in for your lineup or how your lineup's looking or like i said save them for when we go live and have a more interactive and a more real discussion over on the streams rather than it just having just kind of text for the comments i much prefer a more animated sense in terms of like lineup discussion because you can get more out of it rather than just a uh, response back in the YouTube comments although those are definitely appreciated and some people favor those over that but we'll make sure to check out do both of those if you if you so choose I think it's better to get multiple kind of opinions from other different players as well and kind of formulate your answer around that make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new and make sure to turn those notification bells on so that you can get the content as soon as it it is readily available. And like I said, give us a follow on all of the socials down here. You're definitely not going to want to miss it. It's going to be important as well as we're trying to grow the channel and help you guys out. I certainly need help with a red arrow this week. And yeah, hopefully things can get a little bit better. But that's going to do it. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you over on the live stream tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. EST on the 18th. And we will definitely be posting the other video this week which is going to be a buy hold sell video that's going to be out later this evening as well if this video goes up before it if not you probably already watched it and if so make sure to check it out as well that's going to do it and until the next one take care